Hello, Libra viewers. I'm going to look into what your person is thinking, feeling, wanting, what action they might be taking towards you. I know for this group, I get that you've been doing a lot of shadow work, a lot of um, healing, especially over the past year, and that you know your your primary focus, I think, is on new love for a lot of you, at least. You know, I think there are a lot of toxic people in your life, and it, it took you a while to heal from that. Um, so let's see what's going on. I think it's just been a rough healing process for you. It's basically the energy I get from this group. Codependency addiction. Yeah, codependent issues, I think, with somebody... I think there was like a toxic ex where it was like kind of a codependent relationship. Um, you know, a bit of a power struggle with this person. Yeah, a lot of pain, definitely. Apology, regret. Okay, so maybe somebody who hurt you a lot is coming back around to apologize. And they might... See, I feel like this is still toxic though. That's the problem. I don't know. I feel like it's just, it's codependent. So you've got taking it slow, pulling them in, getting to know each other. But I kind of feel like they blamed you. Like, I feel like this is somebody that gaslit you in the past. Like, instead of taking responsibility for, I think, some of them maybe ghosted you. Or they abused you. Um, could be verbal, physical, whatever the situation might be. But I feel like for those that, like, they ghosted you, I feel like they made excuses for it. Um, like, they, they told you, you know, you came on too strong. Or I just wasn't ready for it. Or... or you know, you, you're too dramatic or you put too much pressure on me, this, that. So it's like they're coming in with an apology. It's kind of like a half-ass apology. It's like they're still not taking responsibility for the, their role in this. They're, they've still got a lot of pride. There's still a power struggle with this person. So it's like they're kind of just sad and they're feeling alone and, and you might get like a drunk text or something of that sort. But it's a, it's like, it's not a deep apology is the problem. It's just very, it's still very one-sided, you know? It's still, it's like they do have the regret. This person just has such a, just a toxic energy, I feel, unfortunately. Because I just... I'm trying to figure out what I'm channeling here. It's like it's like they're gonna come in and they're gonna say, you know, I want to take it slow. Like, let's get to know each other. Let's see what happens. Um, let's try to balance things out. But it's like they're still not fully recognizing or accepting how much they hurt you, or they're just not caring about how much they hurt you. It's all just about what they want in the present moment. It's all about their pain. They're focused on their pain, not your pain. They're focused on. They're playing the victim. This person plays the victim a lot, I feel. So this person is just focused on on themselves. Um, they're focused all about, it's all about what they feel. And so it's like they're coming forward, but it's like it's not. And you'll know when this, if, if this person reaches out to you, you're going to know. You're going to feel that energy in this apology. You're going to be like, okay, something's kind of off here. Like they're not... It's just, it's, it's going to feel like they're still restrained. It's going to feel like a restrictive energy. Like they're not really chasing you. They're just kind of going off the pain that they feel in the present moment. Like it's not something they deeply thought about, um, if that makes any sense. It's like, God, what kind of apology could you even expect from somebody like that? It's, it's more like excuses. Like, I don't even know if it's really an apology so much as, like, excuses. Like, it's, it's very, it's just, ugh. It's very, like, oh, well, I had to, like, them trying to explain why they had to ghost you or why they had to be abusive or why they had to do this or they had to do that. It's like, oh, well, I had to move away or I had to focus on my career, you know. I know I could have given you a little bit more attention, but, you know, I had a lot going on in my life at the time. I had a lot on my plate. Can we maybe take it slower this time around? Let's not move so fast. Um, let's find a good balance. But it's like they need, to, they need to own it. They need to own what they did. You know, they can't be getting away with this. I feel like they're going to try to get you to be submissive and weak-willed to them again.
And it's going to take courage to move forward from this, you know? And you're going to know if this is your story. You know, if it's if it doesn't resonate, then it means it's not your story. But if it is, then you know, you probably already know who this toxic ex is if it's your story. Um, you probably got someone in mind. And it's hard. It's going to take a lot of willpower, a lot of courage um, to move forward and not get sucked back into this energy. Because this person is narcissistic, I feel. And they know how to pull you back in. They know how to play on your empathy they know how to gaslight you and make it make you feel like it's all your fault and I think that they know you're an empath they know that you're someone who wants to save others they know that you're someone who um you know wants to fix everything who wants to do right by everybody and they manipulate they they take advantage of that energy and they take it for granted so they're gonna try to kind of turn it like oh you could have done this differently you could have been less clingy or you could have given me more space and then I wouldn't have had to ghost you it's like oh no you don't want that energy you don't want this person this person is so toxic but it, it's hard not to be submissive because there is a codependency here this is like a it's just like a hot and cold relationship that's just there's a power struggle it's, it's hard and you might have soul contracts that you're repeating that you need to, you might need to do some cutting cl cut and clear rituals. You might need to, um, you know, I mean, you've been, you've done a lot of shadow work over this year. Like, don't get me wrong. You've come far. You're a long way from where you used to be. But if you have really deeply ingrained childhood patterns of going for abusive people or going for, you know, like verbally abusive people, toxic people, people that ghost you, people that just don't want you, people that you know, it's always one-sided. It's like, it's not a coincidence. That's body language. You're subconsciously attracted to that and that you're attracting that to you too. Um, you know, it's, it's, what was that quote I heard? Like narcissists go to anybody. That's not, they go to everybody. They go to confident people. They go to insecure people. That's not the issue. The issue is you letting them stay that you, you letting them get away with this. That's the issue. Um, so you might have more just, I mean, like I said, you come a long way, but, but if you have really deeply ingrained patterns, you, you, you kind of have to be aware of body language. You have to, to cut this pattern out and it can be a, a rough process, you know, getting to that point where you love yourself too much to ever allow this energy again. And again, it's, 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 it can be a rough process definitely. And, um, you know, you just, it's like you almost can't always attract, uh, trust who you're attracted to right away unless it's like a soul-based connection and that's what you're feeling. But but when you're attracted to somebody like the bad boy or bad girl type, you gotta you gotta listen to the red flags, you know. Um, otherwise, you're just gonna end this relationship, end this connection with this person, and you're gonna go right. Um, you know, you're gonna find somebody who's the same person just in a different body. You're gonna find the same issues, same ghosting, same gaslighting, same abuse with somebody new because you're repeating that pattern because that's still what you're attracted to. So it's really important to to end soul contracts, to do cut and clearing rituals, and on the psychological side, maybe to get counseling or um, help for this if this is a pattern that you're repeating. But um, but yeah, it's gonna take a lot to because I think I think there's like an addiction to the the pain and the drama and the the chaos here you know I think it's just what you're used to and it's not it, it's not doesn't make you a bad person if you had a rough childhood then that's that's what feels like home to you that's what's familiar to you and so you have to rewrite those patterns and again it takes a lot of work it's not easy um but but yeah this person I feel like they they just manipulate that energy they know that you're an empath they know that they know what to say to push your buttons. They know what to say to, to manipulate you. They know how to gaslight you. They know how to guilt trip you. There's a big energy of guilt tripping here. Like they know how to make you feel like it's your fault when it's actually their fault. So you really need to be conscious of that. And you need to not be submissive to this energy. You need to have the courage and assertiveness to move forward when this comes back around. This could be coming in with Mercury retrograde. Yeah, truth, clarity here we have. And we have domination and um, control, somebody who's controlling, somebody who, see, like, it's kind of like a manipulative, like, ew, like just restricted energy. I don't like that energy. I think the truth and clarity that's coming out is what I just told you about, you know, 
feeling like that's like it's like subconscious patterns it's like that's familiar to you it's not just all men are bad or all women are bad no there's a lot of really good people out there that could love you for the rest of your life but you're not attracted to them you know that's the problem um, they could be right in front of your face, but you would notice the the toxic person. You would notice the person. You have that pattern of like needing to save people or needing to, you know what I mean? There's just, there's just, I mean, you, you know what your patterns are, but it's something that needs to be um, worked on. Um, betrayal, jealousy, conflict. Could be this person is watching you on social media and something's making them jealous. It's like kind of back and forth, kind of game playing here. Anything else? Hidden truth. Yeah, some kind of truth is coming out. Can you guys tell can you tell me about new love here? So I think the problem is it's like your guides do want to bring you the soulmate. They do want to bring you the twin flame, the life partner that's gonna treat you like a queen or treat you like a king. But the issue is that you would probably friend zone them if you if you're in this energy, if this is your story. And again, if it doesn't resonate, it's not your story. But if it is resonating and you you do feel this energy, um, it's like you're probably attracted to better people than you were a year ago, but you're still not quite you're you're still not quite there yet. Um, and you might even want to, like I said, maybe see a counselor or something for it. So it's a problem like almost everybody has. It's not it's not like a rare issue. It's like a lot of people have had abusive childhoods. A lot of people have to break those patterns. Yours just seems like it happen happens to be more intense than um, most. So. Uh, so, I mean, that's the thing is like your guides do want to bring you new love. They're not trying to hold, withhold love from you, but they don't want to bring you a soulmate and have you not be attracted to them and then have you friend zone them. And then it's like you miss that opportunity when maybe, you know, later down the line, when you've really broken these patterns, you would be attracted to that person and you would want them and accept them. Whereas right now it's like you're still, you still have to get past this energy yeah, because this, this soulmate, there is a, a true love, life potential. Yeah, new love, faded encounter. This ex is not, I think you thought this was the one at the point at some point. No. Somebody who is abusive or manipulative or nar narcissistic is not the one for you. Just remember that. Somebody who degrades you, who's verbally abusive or physically abusive, somebody who manipulates you, somebody who who you tell your secrets to and they just turn it around to manipulate you. Somebody who does that is not your person. Your true love is somebody that you're going to feel safe with. There's not going to be that drama with this person. You're going to be able to be yourself 100% and they're going to love and accept you and you're going to feel safe telling them your secrets and being yourself and you're not going to have to worry about them using it against you later. What do you need to do to attract this to get in? I mean, aside from breaking the patterns, what needs to be, yeah, ending soul contracts, ending these patterns. That's what needs to be done. Adventure, honeymoon, vacation. Maybe you need a new location too. If you're, if you could be in stagnant energy, if you're like in your hometown or you're living in a certain area where it's just like the same old, same old energy, or you have constant reminders of this abusive ex, um, you might need to get out of there. You might need to move somewhere. You, you need to, I think you need to go out and experience the world and, and travel, even if you don't move away, if you can just travel a little bit, um, just go on these adventures, just, just appreciate and love life again. I think that you've become stagnant and unhappy and, you know, you need this adventure in your life. You need this new, fresh energy. You need to know that the world can be beautiful again. You need this kind of honeymoon vacation energy. Just go somewhere new so that you're not in the stagnant energy. Because if you're in the same place for too long, everything becomes stagnant and your mind just is, you can't think clearly. If you want to open your mind, you need to go to a new location. And again, even if it's only for a week, even if it's going like out in the woods or someplace beautiful and just relaxing and just being in touch with nature for a week and just having these new adventurous fun experiences it's like then your mind kind of starts opening up you could remember that you you break free you you're you're pushing yourself out of your comfort zone pushing yourself out of the stagnant routine and remembering that life can be beautiful again and um yeah you need that energy you need you need you need that energy definitely Focusing on finances and career. That's another thing I think that's connected to self-love is 
it is focusing on your finances and your hobbies and your passions and your goals and just things that you love about life. And it could be traveling. It doesn't have to be something that's hard. You're, you're, it doesn't have to be a battle. Like it could just be traveling. It could be, um, hiking. It could be art. It could be music. It could just be something you love that helps with self-love is because like you have an outlet. So you're not just sitting around waiting for this toxic person. It's like you have other things going on in your life and that's really going to help you. James visions telep telepathy. Okay, so that's the that's the sorry fifth card. Spying. Hmm. Yeah, someone spying on you. I get that. Overthinking. Probably the toxic ex. Meh. Um Dreams, visions, telepathy. So also developing your spiritual side, like meditating, um, yoga. Uh, you know, diet, fitness, just things that are healthy for you, things that make you feel good, um, really pursuing your passions and your hobbies, getting out, experiencing the world, traveling, cutting these old soul contracts, putting yourself first for a change, not letting your empathy get the best of you, you know, um, having a balance, you know, uh, being more in control of yourself and, and, you know, telep telepathy, it's like kind of connecting to this true love, um, through like the dream state or just through the, you know, having that faith that this person is out there for you. And, and like I said, it's also just developing your intuition more, just meditating and doing things that are healthy for you. Um, so like I said, I wish I could give you more about new love. I did get out the last reading, so it was interesting, but I think it's like a back and forth. It's like you're in the, you're, you're, you're in a process, you know, it makes sense. But when you've gotten to that point where you know what you deserve completely and you're, you've healed those subconscious patterns, which again is, is can be incredibly difficult to heal, but that's when that, that true love is going to come in. Cause like I said, if your guy has brought them in now, you would not be attracted to them. They would not be your type because of body language, because of the subconscious patterns from childhood that keep repeating. You they just would not feel like home to you because it's not what you experienced in your childhood. Like that energy wouldn't resonate with you. Does that make sense? Um, I hope it does. I hope this resonates. And if you want to end up reading my contact info is below. I do have some specials for January and, um, subscribe please. If it resonates, thanks for watching.